Glory to God. Is somebody said this afternoon? Deuteronomy chapter 29. Let's read. These are the covenants where the Lord commanded Moses. Verse 2. And Moses called all Israel, you have seen all that the Lord did before thy eyes in Egypt unto Pharaoh and to all his servants and to everything. Hallelujah. Give me 28 first. We, um, Lord help me. It's supposed to be a short service also. Can I hear me? No, no, no. Chapter 28. Before we get to chapter 28, I think we should just dwell on 28 today. Hallelujah. The spillover will happen if the Lord permits. The Bible says, It shall come to pass. Actually, this is a proper place to start. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Somebody should say amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 2. All these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle and the increase of thy kind and the flaws of thy sheep. Blessed shall thou be, shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when you go out, when you come in and when you go out. The Lord will cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Amen. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Amen. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thy storehouses Amen. and in all that thou settest thy hand unto Amen. and it shall bless thee in the land where the Lord thy God giveth thee. Amen. Hallelujah. What is the condition to all these promises? Before we take our seat, Job 22, verse 22. Hallelujah. If thou shalt hearken diligently, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thy heart. If you return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy boundaries of the tabernacle. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. Ah. Change the word gold for dollars. And naira. And pounds. So it is possible for God to bless somebody that you lay pounds as dust. Wow. They are so much that they look like dust. Dust is everywhere. And there is no amount of cleaning you do. Once you wait for a while, dust will come again. That means you are so blessed. Even if you give it away, it comes back again. <laughs> God bless you. Can I just see it? Is that not the kind of blessing you want? <laughs> the Bible says, Lord, we command his blessing over you. He will command blessing over but the Bible says if thou shalt hearken diligently I want to talk briefly about obedience this afternoon as a key obedience Job 36 11 Job 36 11 if they obey and serve him what will happen to them? Where I'm going is to say to everybody, 
one of the strategies of the extraordinary strategists is to set an instruction for people to follow, not to punish them, but that they might walk in blessing. There is always an instruction to follow. And once there is disturbance, losses, and no peace, many times an instruction has been violated. In Isaiah 14 verse 18, let's read. Then we come back to the ones we read before. You know, when the Lord said to Balaam that don't follow this man, and then they talked himself into going, if not that the donkey dodged the angel, the angel was going to kill him. For every Christian under the sound of my voice, here and those who are watching, there are two sets of instructions. The Bible contains things that God does not expect us to do. Instructions to follow. Things we are to do and things we are not to do. But beyond that, God is also always giving people personal instruction. When you start working with God, and this is where I might dwell a bit on next week, by the grace of God. When you start working deeply with God, there are things that are okay for others and God will say you should not do. There are general rules and general instructions for all of his children. A believer must not be a fornicator. A believer must not cause, must not steal, must not... Those are general rules. A believer is to serve the Lord. Those are general instructions and there is a blessing that comes with obedience to those instructions. But as you step to second level in the spirit, then it begins to become after the general, there are specific instructions that even people do what to do, God might not tell them the same thing. So there can be hundred of you in the choir and God might begin to give you in particular some instructions, some demands or some things to do that is not asking others to do. Actually that begins to happen when God wants to separate you for something great. God did not tell all other prophets in the Bible not to cut their ear but God told Samson. Elijah was not told anything about ear but Samson was told that when the Lord told Mrs. Lot and Lot's family not to look back because it had to do with how they left Abraham and the covetous spirit working with them and God said they should not look back. She looked back and she became a pillar of salt. But if you are very familiar with the Bible, the following morning when Abraham woke up because he was concerned about Lot, he went to climb mountain and he was looking at Sodom and Gomorrah like this and he did not become a pillar of salt because God did not say that to Abraham. He said it to Lot. There are personal instructions. Now, I have found out. Now, whether you hear the voice very clearly or not, listen to me. Your spirit man knows certain things. What we do is that many times my people perish because of association. Once we get to the midst of people who do something, we think that means that we too should do that, especially when it comes to these instructions. There are some Christians, when they sit down and talk about that Christian, nothing happens to them. When you do, you block doors in the spirit that will manifest physically. Because for you, the Lord does not want you to sit down and talk about nobody. But you can be in a unit where one or two members of that unit, they always do that, and then you join them. I get what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. There can be an instruction for some to stop watching certain stuff on social media. They are not even things like porn are out, out, outrightly wrong, pornography outrightly wrong. But that's not what I'm talking about. This is advanced level of Christianity. I'll show you the tragic story of a young prophet in the Bible. The Bible says that that is Isaiah 48 18 says that all that you have akin to me, your peace would have been flowing like that of a river. So anywhere there is no peace, begin to check because the way God works. He leaves an instruction behind. Even in the perfect world, the two perfect chapters in the Bible are Genesis 1 and 2. Those were the chapters before the fall of man. They indicate God's original intention before sin entered the world. 
Even in those two perfect chapters, God still told Adam, of all the trees you can eat, but there is one. God is always pained when his words are violated. It is true. Funny. Immorality is wrong. Forget about the nonsense teaching that somebody is giving around that God is not looking at. It's totally wrong. But you see, let me tell you this from experience. There are Christians, if they do and they repent, it looks like nothing much. They have sinned against God, they repent and they correct it now. Every sin grieves God. But there are some other people, if they do, even after repenting, things will still fall apart beyond comprehension. It's like the jealousy of God is over some people, more than some other people. Instructions. I don't know if somebody gets what I'm saying. Let me show you this guy. <laughs> I believe, this is my personal opinion, the anointing that Elijah had that made him to call down fire was meant for this young man originally. Because when somebody fails God, he raises somebody quickly. They love both physical and spirit, they forbid vacuum. Where God is not, Satan will fail. The aspect of life you don't give to God, something else will fill it. Vacuum is not allowed. I get what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. If you don't want weed on your ground, plant something there. Even though weed will still go around that something, the only place weed will not go is under that thing. Because they love this life for bits vacuum. <laughs> Let me play that. Okay, let's read. Let's read first, uh, first King chapter 13. What are the personal instructions that the Lord is telling you? I don't know why he led me to say this today. You know, he can actually say no to makeup for some people. Heavy makeup. But you are in nature the way we make up. God, when it comes to these special instructions, it's not a matter of a sin. It's not a sin. It's just for you. Because there is something between you and God. He just says, this is it. And you know what? If he created one man, and he said, why did God put that tree there? And he said, you must not touch this one. In the garden of your life, there is always a tree you must not touch. There are many Christians, you have not actually sat down with God to discuss the terms of your life. Somebody brought to you here, so you can't live for yourself. Honestly speaking, prosperity begins by when you begin to ask God, how shall this life be? This woman you created, what is it about her? Once you begin to walk this realm, there is extra protection over what to do. Have you ever asked God what to do with your money? What to do with your time? So many times we dress like people around us, not the way he wants us to dress. That's more common with ladies. So this one, behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the one loved out of Bethel. And Jeroboam stood there to burn incense. Verse 2. And he cried against the altar in the word, in the word of the Lord. And he said, O altar, altar, thou said the Lord. A child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. Upon thee shall offer the priest of high place and so on. Upon, next verse. And they give a sign that they saying, this is the sign that the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when Jeroboam the king heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar of Bethel, that he put forth his side. He did like this. He said, arrest him. <laughs> and the Bible says, his hand which he put forth dried up. Only people have this kind of incredible anointing. So that he could not pull it back again. Imagine you are so anointed that you are talking to somebody said that, that man and, the, 
And this was the king. Before him, nobody had worked in this realm. Maybe I'm also talking about talking to people that want to begin to do some deeper things for God. There is no genuine man of God that does not know area you should stay away from. They might not look like something wrong. Uh, there are tribes in the spirit, and you must know where you belong. Is somebody following me? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Next verse. The altar also was rent and the ashes poured out. The guy had not finished talking. He said there will be a sign. The sign happened immediately. The sign that the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Next verse. And the king said unto the man of God, Please pray that my hand should be restored. And the man of God besought the Lord and the king's hand was restored. What a dynamic young guy. They didn't even tell us his name. Next verse. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me. Refresh yourself. I will give thee a reward. Next verse. And the man of God said to the king, Even if you give me out of thy house, I will not go with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. Next verse. Now he said where the secret of his power. For so it was charged by me, by the word Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you want to cast out a demon, a demon when I talk about deliverance classes I will talk about some of these things if the Holy Spirit says that stay on this side to address the spirits if you stay on this side the demon might not go one day taboo to get A again and the Lord told him exactly how to address you'll be wondering Lord what is so but that is the way the Lord is to, the, to a natural man, you do understand why things should be. But see, the way it is in the spirit is different from the way you are saying things here. <laughs> they said, don't eat bread, don't drink water in that city. And don't, come, don't go by the same way. So, the man came this way. The Lord said, you must go out this way. And he told the king, he stood his ground. Next verse. So he went another way and returned not by the way which he came to Bethel. Next verse. Now there was an old prophet. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to go deep into the old prophet. Old prophet. He has stopped hearing God. And the sons came and told him. When the son got to him, they told him, Ah, sir, you know what happened today? One man just showed up. The king pointed and his hand dried. And the man prayed and the hand also got healed. And the man said, really? So they were talking about what happened. They reminded him of when he used to be anointed. Next verse. And their father said to them, which way went he? And his son, they saw him when he was going. Satan strap. May wrong people not see you. They said he went this way. Next verse. And he said to the saddle me and ass. So the saddle, and he rode upon. Next verse. And he went after the man who and found him sitting under an oak. Ah, he should not have sat down. The king's business require haste. If he was not waiting, this man wouldn't have caught up with him. And he said, Are you the man of God that came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. Next verse. And he said, I may not return. He said the same thing. I will not eat bread nor drink water in this place. Next verse. For so it was said to me, he knew the word that God gave him. Men and brethren, don't sacrifice your personal conviction for pressure. Under pressure. Don't. He said it again that this is what I was told. Next verse. He said, I am also a prophet as thou art. An angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back to your house that he may eat bread. But the Bible says what? He lied to him. God will not say yes and no at the same time. See, if a guy comes around, a lady, and you pray, and the Lord says, That's not who to marry. If you continue to pray about it, you will hear another voice that will say, Thou, my son, marry as thou art. 
when you bombard God where he has given an answer, never put comma where God has put full stop. Otherwise, we hear another voice. That, this was exactly what happened to Balaam also. The first night they came, the Lord said, who are these people that came? Oh, and you know, when God is asking a question, he's not looking for an answer. In other words, Balaam, what are you doing with these people? And Balaam said, uh, Balak sent them. They said, come and call this one. And God said, thou shalt not go. And the president left. And Balaam came to the scene and said, that, guys, when I was praying in the room, because he loved them overnight, God said, I should not follow you. Bye-bye. Tell your king I'm not coming. Then the king sent Satan. See, the people of them, they don't give up on time. Sent more people, more honorable chiefs, and they brought better gifts. When they came the first time, it was Naira they brought. This time around, they brought dollars and pounds. Ah. They just put the bag down. Beam. The guy opened it. First thing, a dollar. Ah. He said, let me pray again. <laughs> and as he began to pray, he heard, go, I shall be with you. Because the Lord actually said that, go. But see, there is a difference between go, my son, that's all, and go. Just go. Are you with me? So, and the Bible says, when he was going, the Lord was angry. God will not change his mind when he has told you something. In some cases, he can let you obey for a long time. He will come by himself in a way that you cannot. By the way, where is Brother Masha? Where is Dr. Masha? I didn't know that the wife has put to bed. It's one of the amazing doctors in the church. What a joy. Congratulations. They waited on God for years. I know the funny thing. Out of their desperation one day, they were waiting on God. They wanted to go. They thought of IVF. They waited for years. And I think they said they've done it for a day. We failed. It's one of the people in the security. That's why it's outside. So one day they came to the office to them, told them to see me. Maybe they brought a million or two. And they said that they wanted to go abroad to do IVF. But that they were, they were told to sow the money to me. So I took the envelope. I prayed. And I said, take. Mm -mm. I said, go and use the money to buy something for the family. The Lord has seen your heart. I said, by the word of the Lord, within the next one year, you will, she will conceive. That was last day. And they just announced that she didn't that money. I said, God just wanted to test your obedience. God did. There was a lady in church that gave me a car one time. I took the key and I prayed over her. I said, take, go and use your car. God just wanted to see whether you can part away with your car. The Lord does not need your car. Go and enjoy your car. And shortly after that, she brought, she now bought a real new car that she's using now. And every time I see her drive the car, I'm like, oh, Father, thank you. You know, I say, it's not every gift a pastor should receive. You must follow the Lord. If you receive what God has not called you to receive, it's a curse. And you will pay dearly for it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. Anyway, let's finish this guy and I will stop. Is his story interesting? Yes, sir. That's why I love Bible study. Go back to the dark guy. So, next verse. So he went back. May you never go back on what the Lord. Yeah. And did eat bread in his house and drank water. Next verse. This is dangerous. It came to pass as they sat at the table. Now, the word of the Lord that did not come to old prophet in years came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried, said, man of God, don't fear the Lord because you have disobeyed the word of my mouth and you have not kept the commandments of the Lord. Next verse. You came back the way I said you should not come back. You ate bread and drank water. Where I said you should not eat. Thy carcass shall not come into the sepulchre of your father. And it came to pass after he had eaten. Was she in jail? Huh? He was eating the food. <laughs> after he had eaten and drunk that, he sat down and asked for him. Next verse. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast away. And the ass stood by it, and the lion also stood. 
God is amazing. This is why I do know, sincerely speaking, if there's no orchestration of death against you in the spirit, nothing will happen to you physically. How do you explain a lion standing side by side with an ass and he didn't touch the ass? He was not sent to the ass. He killed the prophet, he did not eat him, he left the body there, lion stayed by the body and the ass was there also. And they were having a nice time. And now was telling the ass that, well, <laughs> on a good day in the world, <laughs> I would have made you <laughs> dinner. He said, but God don't send me to you today. So, I'm just about, even when the old prophet came back, I want to stop the story, but when he came back to retrieve the body, he took the body and the lion didn't touch him. And he went to bury. And the old prophet now said that, when he was buried, he said, this man was a dis he disobeyed the Lord. The same guy. And he said, and he was preaching on his bed and telling me that this is what happens to all of you that like disobeying God. <laughs> Hallelujah. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, it will command all these blessings to come upon thee. Everyone that is sound of my voice, this way I stop. If you are yet to experience some dimensions of grace and mercy, there are some instructions that you are yet to step into. God does not joke with words. He says certain people when they obey him, they will lay gold as dust. They will be so blessed that they cannot count their blessing. Only few Christians have attained to that level. One day our listeners rejoined and he said that it's amazing that almost everything God has promised, less than 2% of Christians are working in it. He said because not too many people have made up their mind to take God by his word and follow after. And if you have, they have too many testimonies to share. Obedience. Mm -hmm. You know at times, there are people here at times you are in a bus you are in a train station you are somewhere at times in the office the spirit of God prompts you to talk to somebody you refuse to what I'm trying to show you in God's word is that God is excited when he's obeyed and he pays God there are two areas where Christians disobey God most we don't like him to tell us to preach to anybody because we don't want to get out of our comfort zone. The second one is in the area of money. Not too many people have allowed God into their finances, yet we decree, we pray. We give God what we want to give him, not what he has commanded. Yet we all say that, Lord, all I have is yours. And God knows that it's just coming from your lips. Turn to any corner. That's the truth. That's the reality. Are you with me? Yes, Obedience. If they obey and serve him, this is where I want to stop. Is <laughs> someone blessed? Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Shortly after that guy's story, three chapters after that, or four, Elijah came to the scene. No other person wore that kind of grace and anointing again. God must have waited for a while. Then Elijah. Repeatedly, God said to Isaac, I'm doing this because your father Abraham obeyed me. It means a lot to him. A lot. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is what we should do begin to ask for leading and begin to obey instructions given to you by the Spirit of God. Heavenly Lord, shall we rise? Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to implore you now to give your heart to Christ. 
And by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously. He has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.